Hi everyone, in this video tutorial we'll see another feature of surface controller in one dimensional mode. For this example I've prepared a surface uh, using a low editable polygon like this which basically it was made of a box that I removed to uh, faces on top and the bottom and then using edit poly modifier chamfer the edges and I manipulate some vertices and then using the mesh smooth I create a smooth mesh out of it and then we add edit poly modifier just to be able to use surface controller of battery and what I'm gonna populate in the surface is a 2D spline shape which I have extruded using extrude modifier and I have the freeform deformation modifier on top and as you can see from top view it has a hole inside which uh, gives you this right direction here and for us it's very important to uh, be able to control the direction of the objects when you have it on the surface well normally when you do that using a uh, one dimensional array mm, the direction of the panel on each face is going to follow the uh, order of vertices inside that face and to show you we're just going to array that using uh, one dimensional array let's keep the original object here is asking if we want to control that freeform deformation modifier control points we say yes but I'm not going to use the spline vertices so let's leave it for now alright the first thing is we just transform the objects on the surface by adding the surface controller to transform property okay that's about it I'm just going to shrink them and fit them on each face using surface controller and master control points. We go with instance option and then to set the offices just like before we use the sub object controller here. Let's add it. Okay. Well, now I see what's uh, happening is kind of irregular pattern uh, that these objects are creating. The reason of this is that each object is following the vertices of each face in terms of direction. So, for example, for this particular face, you might have the first vertex here while in the first vertex for this face is going to be somewhere else and that's why in each face you get the panel in different direction let's panelize the entire surface using the set array count here so in it, and as you know from the previous uh, video I can choose uh, vertex as normal to avoid the gaps between the objects here. Okay, but now what if you want these to be in the same direction? A new feature has been added to part 2.8, which is that you can rearrange the, all the faces of the base polygon object in order to get these in one direction. And this is from the surface optimization method. This method works only with one dimensional domain since for the two dimensional domain you already have these in one direction. So let's check this on and update the array and we can see that except the first row all of the objects are in the same direction. Let's see what other options we have under surface optimization. Well, the first parameter that you can set is the start face, and that means the algorithm starts from the face number one here, and it tries to rotate the vertices in, inside each face to match the face one. If you choose the second face, 
and you will get these uh, faces like this. You can also adjust the first edge of this dark face. This actually rotates all the panels in place. Now let's see how we can get the first row in the same direction as others. Well, you need to rotate this panel in place um, 180 degrees. For that, I need to add a parameter to this object. So let's go back to our original form and let's make a copy of it by holding shift and sliding over. We create a copy. And then we're just going to add an attribute holder and uh, we add a new parameter to the to the attribute holder using the parameter editor of max. Let's call this parameter rotation. The range of this parameter is going to be something between 0 and 360. Make sure the parameter is going to add in to selected objects current modifier and you click on add. Well we get the rotation as a new parameter to our object here. What we need to do now is to replace the all the objects of our array with the new object. From the modify panel you can click on the pick object button of the parameter array and choose the new object. Now we're asking if you, you know, to keep all the transformation and you, you have to say yes to this question so you don't have to set up all the controllers again. Now we're asking it, uh, you need to access to the attribute folder parameters. That's also something we need to do. So we say yes. The same for the F50 control points but not for the vertices of the spin line just like before. The message says that all transformation have been transferred to the new array, which is good. Now array is getting updates and once it finished, it asks us would you like to keep the objects of the old array? We say no. It's going to delete those objects and then we have all these panels with a new attribute holder on, on each. So let's uh, go to the front view and select the these objects. And you can see I have selected these which are not in the same direction as others. And we'll go under the attribute holder and the rotation. We choose apply settings only on selected objects from here. We set these. In the rotation of these 280. So just to check if this is okay. Uh, yes, uh, all of them are set to 180. So let's get back to uh, Mary and uh, to rotate these. What we're going to do is uh, click on sub object controller. This is our sub object controller that gives us the offsets value. For each control points, and here we can rotate that it acts uh, like a gizmo in 3D Max. So you just need to try the transform controller over this, and we can try to keep current controller a sub controller, and then we just need to rotate these as much as we have specified in rotation value for the roll amount. You need to assign a lean controller that refers to the rotation. So let's go here, and this is the lean controller. And that would be an internal link. And each object is going to link to uh, its custom parameter, which we named rotation. So now it's, each item is going to rotate based on the rotation value we are specifying manually. Here we go. Uh, now all of my items are in the same direction. Most of the times the optimization method works 
over and you don't have to even rotate some objects manually but this is just in case if you need to here's the solution uh, thanks for watching and i hope you learned something here